so I have a very full 15 minutes, so I'm going to jump right in. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the ad, and I'm going to let you go ahead and kind of read through the links of or the requirements, and there's some links at the bottom. Uh, so this tool is an add-in to help you quickly build navigation for objects and for data. Now, the object navigation is handled with a ribbon, which is, you know, been a standard in Office for the last dozen years or more. Uh, so most of the users are going to be familiar with it. I know there's a love-hate relationship with a ri ribbon. I hope the hate is because the XML is hard to deal with. My tool will hopefully fix that. Um, the data and navigation. Let me just say we are now entering the commercial zone. All the tools so far were free. Now we are going really commercial, don't we? Well, no, this is actually there's a free version of this and a kind of an updated okay. version. So there is a free version. Don't get scared off. Um, uh, anyway, so the I was talking about the data navigation. Um, other than the record selector, you're kind of left to your own devices to do the data navigation. So I'm trying to solve that with a tree view. Um, and what we'll look at is a sample database real quick. Then I'll show you how the add-in works. And then at the end, I'll show you how you can add it to an existing database. So with that, I'm going to jump over to access. And here's a ribbon. It's not any different than any other ribbon. I'm not going to spend any time on that. I think the thing that makes this uh, a little more interesting is when you click on this, I can generate a native tree view. So as I click through here, you can see it syncs up with the subform. If I drill in to here, I can then drill into an order level. And then finally, I can drill in to products. And this is all. Uh, driven off the add-in. Um, one of the things you can do with the tree view is you can simply type, and I typed SAH, uh, SAS, which got Sasquatch Ale, and now I can quickly navigate to all the occurrences of that. I can do that because this is a complete tree. There's four different types of trees. Uh, this one is complete, and if you look down here, I know it's going to be hard to see, um, but this loaded 3,000 nodes in less than a half a second. So it's very performant. Now, the second kind is what I call a dynamic tree. And this one here only loads the first level. So it loads 29 nodes. And then as I drill into it, it'll expand out and show you the uh, details there. So that loaded two and that loaded four. Once a node is loaded, it's always there. So this is really handy if you've got a hundred thousand potential nodes or a million nodes because your data is probably relational. You can basically segment that down so you can only have to have a hundred rows or so. And you saw what a thousand rows loads. It's pretty performant. So those are the two you're probably going to use the most. Um, this one here I call recursive, and if you remember back to the Northwind sample database, um, there's a reports to field. So Steve Buchanan reports to Andrew Fuller, and as we drill down, you can see there's a chain. I can do this with one query, and then it'll magically kind of build the relational thing as long as there's a self-referencing field. And then the last... Um, one is what I call a complex tree. And this one here allows you to build uh, very random things. You can see each of those users has a direct reports and a sales. And if I drill in here, I get a list of um, people that report to them. And then here I get a list of sales. So at this third level, I have two totally different sets of forms. OK, so that's the tree view piece. Let me show you kind of how the ribbon gets built. I'm going to close down all those forms. I'm going to go ahead and launch the add-in. And if you've never uh, worked with a ribbon, oh, something got edited. If you've never worked with 
the ribbon thing, there's basically four levels you have to deal with. The first is the ribbon itself. And with this, you just need to give it a name. So the name at the top uh, is what will display here. And then it's really start from scratch or not. Start from scratch will generate a uh, brand new ribbon, so it'll take everything off. Whereas if you don't have the start from scratch, it'll actually append it on the end. The next level is the tabs. And really all you need is a name, and that's going to correspond to the tabs across the top that you can see here. The next level is the groups. So a control must live in a group. And really, there's not a lot of difference between a group and a tab. What this will create is the big buckets here. So employees, customers, products, orders, and legacy will all get um, groups. And then finally, we have the controls. And this is where things actually happen. So I'm going to go ahead and add a control. And the control you're probably going to use the vast majority of the time is a button. So I'll create a button. I'm going to give it a, a label of DevCon. Whoops, a label of DevCon 2020. And then I want to set an image for it. And so, when you select one of the image fields, it loads a new menu where I can browse all the MSO IDs that are out there. Okay, this is probably a lot of work to try to figure out what they are because they're in by the name that the system uses. So I built in a little search uh, function that I can type in there. And now you can see it search for anything that has access in the name. So if I select that, it'll then drop the MSO image of Microsoft access there. It also will search, um, kind of queues up the searches with an L. And so now I have the searches here, and it'll retain those searches throughout your session. Um, that's great, but a lot of those images are going to be kind of canned. So you can also load images from the shared resources. So. One of the reasons I only support Access 2010 and newer is it has the uh, MSYS shared resources where I can load icons, and then I can simply select it there. Now, only one icon can be displayed. So in this case, I've chosen to display the MSO image if it's there. Otherwise, I display the, uh, the custom image. So that won't have any effect. Uh, and then finally, what you need to do is say, what do I want to have? happen when I click on that. So in this case, I'm going to load a simple form. It'll fire up. It'll say, hey, what form do you want? I can select an existing form. I hit select. It sets a tag for me so it knows what to build. And then we have a couple options. Uh, one, we can preview this ribbon. So remember, we just added one button. Here's what the existing ribbon looks like. So if I do preview, you can see our button popped up. And it actually works. So you can actually see what um, your button is going to do and test it out. You may have noticed down here, it also lights up a button in red for build and save. That's because the XML that's stored in the database is now different than the XML that's being stored in the tables. So if I hit that, it automatically updates the system. If I were to go into here, and make a simple edit, it lights up again saying, hey, you're out of sync. So you have to kind of keep those in sync. So that's how you build the ribbon. The tree views, in a lot of respects, are a little bit simpler. And I'm going to select the first uh, one we did, which was the uh, orders by employee. And you can see it's three levels, but I have to have a um, header record that defines what the ribbon is. That allows me to pick one of the four types. I then give it a name, which will show up in the dropdown. This caption is what's displayed on the form. I can optionally add a custom image to display on the form, which we'll show you again. And then I can set 
um, how wide it is. And if you're using the overlapping windows, you can go ahead and actually set the widths. And then simply, you write a query. And I always take the first level as the primary key, the second level as the caption. Then you can specify what the ID is going to be and what form to sync up. Subsequent levels, the third field is always going to be the parent or the key back to the parent. So I'll show you this when I uh, create a new one. The only one that's different is the complex tree. And in that case, when you select a level, you have the option of query or header. Header was the one that says direct reports or sales. And in that case, all I can specify is an icon and a subform. All it is is a placeholder. So that is a super quick tour. Let me show you how you would add this to your uh, database. Let me close out of access. And I'm going to show you, uh, here's an empty Northwind database. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I'm going to go to the database tools. And the first time this runs, it's going to say, hey, wait a minute. I don't understand this database. I've never seen it before. In order for my add-in to work, I have to have some place to persist what you're building with the tree and with the ribbon. So I'm going to have to input six tables into your database, two forms, a module, and then I have to set some references. So if I hit update, it's going to do all that in the background. And when it finishes, you'll see it's added a library folder here. And if I look at it, it drops in two uh, libraries. And they're showing the lock files because they're actually active. So this is what you get when you first load it. I have a sample button here. It's not been saved. Oops, didn't do that yet. Um, I was going to say, oh, preview is what I wanted to do. Um, this one is not start from scratch, so you end up getting a blank space and then the tab, which that button doesn't do anything. So I'm going to wire that up to a tree view that we're going to create. Now, I can't build out a stub of a tree view because it's based on your data, so I have to create one. So we can create a test one here. We'll say, hello. Um, of con dev con 2020. We're going to go give it an image of countries. That's all I have to do. Then I can create a level. And in the level, I don't have to give it the friendly name. And because we only have one query, it doesn't matter. I then just build a query. And I went to the ID, customer name, set it to ascending. I'm going to assume that works. It then sticks the query in here. I can specify what the key field is and what form to load. And I can save it. I can also preview it so you can see that it loads the forms. I can go back to setup. Uh, let's flip back over to here. I will define, say I'm going to load a tree. I will pick the test tree, select. I can then go back and preview it. And this should work. Now, there's a bit of a timing thing. This is a pro version, so the tree view will display. But the first time you load it, because I did everything at once, it doesn't know that it's active. So you have to shut the add-in down and restart. So if I do that. Uh, real quick. And then go back to preview. It should show you all the records. So that's just a bit of a timing issue I need to work on. Uh, and then finally, if I hit build and save, um, it'll save that ribbon. Now when I restart, it'll be there. So. Like I said, that's a super quick thing, and I'm about out of time, if not out of time. Uh, so just to kind of recap, 
There's a free version which you can build the ribbons that we showed. Um, you can also test drive the tree view piece, but only 10 nodes will display for the first level or per child. With the pro version, um, you can build more complicated ribbons. Um, so things like menus, drop downs, dynamic menus. You can also uh, automatically generate VBA callback signatures. And then of course the restrictions are removed. Um, there's a link at the first slide. Uh, I did want to, I had planned to give out a, a discount at the uh, Vienna conference, but since it's all virtual, I thought, what the hell, I'll give out the demo. Day. So this will last through the end of the month. Um, so that's it. I know I'm out of time. I will hang around uh, and ask any questions after the next one. There were so. several questions in the chat, Kevin, but I think you can answer them in the chat. Just have a look because we're yep. out of time. Yep. Thank that's you very much quickly. for presenting okay. that. I think it's interesting for many here. So thanks. All right. Thank you.